the ultimate test bench gets shown off. Mozilla is canceling their pocket and the great divorce from Windows is starting now. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, May 23rd, 2025. And we're gonna start off today just reminding you that in less than a month, we're gonna be drawing the winners for our RTX 5090 gaming PC giveaway over on our Twitch channel. You can still enter during that time, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. In case you're interested, you can also go watch our twitch.tv forward slash UFD music channel with music that has been curated by Reese and made by actual artists, not AI. And we'll be giving away a 9070 XT for people who go watch that channel. And I am watching what Der Bauer is doing with his new Der Bench table that got shown off at Computex here. This thing looks like something I'm immediately going to pick up as soon as it goes on sale because it is everything that probably a computer hardware tester could possibly need on a single open test bench. You can see that it can mount graphics cards, no problem. You put a motherboard down on the push pins, but then it has integration for so many different things, whether that's M.2 SSDs or SATA hard drives or all of your different fan connectors, plugging in your actual power supply into the test bench so that way it can power all of that and you can worry about just getting your board set up while everything else runs independent of your actual system that you're putting on the test bench. It seems like one of those things that's so obvious now that it's made, and of course it's being made by Der Bauer because he is one of the premium ETH enthusiasts in the PC space, and it's in partnership with Elmore Labs as well, who's also into the extreme overclocking enthusiast space. And so this is a nice partnership. Thermal Grizzly, their debench table, they say that roughly the price should be around 200 euro or $200, and I will likely get one for the UFD office as soon as as it drops. But while Computex is fun, sometimes it does make you sad to see something you really like and then learn it's a prototype with no release date. That's not exactly what's happening with their DaVinci table, but it's definitely happened. But if you want PC parts that you can use right now, today's sponsor Jawa has you covered. They are mad serious about supplying thrifty gamers like you with some seriously good hardware. Jawa is the best place to buy and sell PC hardware online because it's made up of a community of enthusiasts just like you. You. Jawa also knows the importance of security when getting your business done online. Every transaction on Jawa is safe and secure, whether you're the buyer or the seller. If you're buying, you also get the added security of knowing every listing that is manually reviewed before going live, and certain sellers even get verified by Jawa. Now, let's say you decide that your current card ain't doing it for you. Jawa's got this RTX 3070 listed for the B580's MSRP. And not to spoil anything about the video that we're going to be making sometime soon, but I might take that deal if I were you. Maybe you're also the type of person who doesn't want to fiddle with gadgets and doodads and you just want a nice pretty metal box with lights to plug in and start grinding OSRS on? Well, you're in luck. Jawa's got fully built PCs ready to go on top of their huge selection of components. Now, click on over to your Discord. Well, first finish the video, but after that, go check out Jawa's Discord. I'm sure you'll find some useful PC building advice, maybe irresistible deals, or just some nice chit chat with fellow enthusiasts particularly about the Computex trade show. Grab yourself something new to you on Java today via the link in the description below. And remember to use code UFD10 for 10% off up to $10. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring this video. And big thanks to Tech Power Up for uh, giving us indication on what's going on here at Computex because according to them, and based on some light Googling that I've done, the world's first five gigabit per second ethernet switch has been on display at Computex here. It's being made by a company called Sirinet or SiriVision, depending on uh, how you read their name, but it's an eight port managed switch and an unmanaged one. And this is just unique to talk about because as far as I'm aware, most switches are either one gigabit, there are some two and a half gigabit, I believe, and then 10 gigabit. Five gigabit is starting to appear on things like various motherboards in the PC sector, but uh, not necessarily in a switch. I'm not sure if this is necessarily worth picking up. It was just a notable little thing that I saw that I wanted to talk about. And I also want to talk about Mozilla shutting down Pocket because this is another thing that I saw. Not really relevant to me, but I'm sure that somebody in the community has been using Pocket 
market for years as Mozilla decides to start focusing more on its Firefox browser. It's going away as well as their fake review detector known as FakeSpot. They're going to be shutting those down. In fact, they already did shut down yesterday. Pocket did the web extension. However, you have the ability to use it for a little bit and then export your stuff for a little bit. It's just a couple months that you'll have left. But people who were using Pocket, which was originally called Read It Later, launched almost two decades ago and kind of just was a uh, save for whenever you got around to it, whatever thing you found on the internet. Can't wait to read the comments of people mourning the loss of Pocket down below in the comments, not because I am looking forward to seeing the morning, but because I want to find out how important it was to audience and Reese is important to me and to your wallet. So let's see him saving money. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well and I'll get into the deals for you guys. Starting off with this U-Shared's microphone boom arm, which is going for only $19.99, making it half price, saving you $20. But then next up, we have the Epo Maker TH80SE, which is a wireless 75% gasket mount hot swappable keyboard, which you can grab for only $39.99, making it $46 off. If you're not a fan of the purple colorway, you can just slap a new set of keycaps on and you're still saving some money. And then lastly today, we have the Zelman i4, TG 140 ATX mid tower case, which comes bundled with four 140 millimeter RGB case fans for only $58.39, making it $14.60 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you a fact to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it's probably gonna be a long while before we get a deal on some of the new stuff that Corsair had to show off at Computex this year. But this was one of the last booths that we got to check out yesterday. We didn't happen to take tons of footage at the show floor of Corsair, so I'm gonna be going through a few articles from OC3D as well as WCCF Tech, but I got to talk to the engineer behind some of these cases and just learn about the thought process that went into them. And honestly, I'm very excited for this. So I even said this to the team members here at UFD Tech, I've been hesitant with all of the live stream builds and the giveaway builds that we do here at UFD Tech to kind of use some Corsair builds because they've been uh, so pedestrian for a while, the uh, you know 4,000, 5,000D, those boxes have been around for so long that they kind of looked commonplace. And now, finally at Computex this year, it looks like they're really shaking that up and changing a lot of their design language in a way that I really appreciate. Primarily, the Air 5400 is a complete departure from what I've seen a lot of other companies do. And I like all of the aspects of what Corsair's thinking and thought process is going into into this case. So this is a triple chamber computer where you see it has the front chamber where you have all of your computer parts. Then you can see on the left right here, it actually has this airflow chamber that is specifically designated for things like your radiator from your CPU cooler and the heat will never enter your actual chassis because they have this routing vent that blocks it from going back into either the power supply chamber or the front main chamber. This is just a brilliant way to get all of the heat straight out of the case and make sure that your cooling temperatures stay good. Additionally, they have this little chimney box that they have down at the bottom of the case, which will direct the airflow from your bottom mounted fans directly into your graphics card in a way that funnels it and makes it a little bit more effective. And additionally, you might've noticed that at at the top of it, they also have a little chimney stack that's facing down. We talked to them, they said that was just for symmetry reasons. It's not likely to add a whole lot of efficacy when it comes to cooling because you're more most likely gonna put uh, exhaust fans at the top and that would like kind of constrict the airflow going in, but it shouldn't make a huge difference in terms of the total amount of cooling that you get. One of the things that I don't really have a great picture of here is that instead of using things like rubber grommets or just kind of raw metal that separates the different parts of the case, they're actually using bristles, which is something that I haven't seen on a PC case before. So I'm really intrigued to see that. Additionally, they had things like their Frame 4500X, which has like this waterfall curved metal design on top, as well as the interior just looking like it is ready to go for anybody who's looking to do water cooling and have a visually stunning build. And I think Corsair absolutely had uh, that going on. I'm excited to build in the 5400 whenever that does come out. We did get to check out the Elgato booth with things like their virtual Steam Deck. We also got to talk to the people over at Drop who are making the things that I'm spending way too much money on with their Lord of the Rings like keycap sets that they have. They're made of resin. They had one there that they showed to us that like the entire box of keycaps is worth $1,600, which is more than all the keyboards they had 
on the wall. So uh, a lot of good stuff at Corsair this year. I'm excited to build in it in the future. And I'm excited for the future, which is just a couple days away, which is the launch of the Lenovo Legion Go S. And the reason this is a huge deal is because with the launch of this console, Valve has now, with its latest SteamOS launch, opened up support for their operating system to outside devices. Now, this is specifically to support the Legion Go S, but this is one of the steps that they're taking to have a wider release of SteamOS onto various different platforms. Now, SteamOS is still likely to come out to things like the RG Ally and various other consoles moving forward, but it also is looking to get a desktop launch, hopefully later this year. And I just wanted to note this because this is probably the moment that a significant number of PC gamers are going to ditch Windows as soon as this opens up. This is the moment where Valve moves from being a company that designed their own hardware and software for themselves and started designing it for other platforms. And I think that's gonna mark a significant shift over to Linux gaming. Now, normally when I talk about this, people are like, use Bazite, use Manjaro, use Arch. You don't need SteamOS. But from what I've talked to about people who practically use that day to day who are not Linux pros, they still need the hand-holding that Valve provides with SteamOS in order to get things going. You need a seamless, kinda almost foolproof operating system to deploy to the masses, and I think we're starting to get that with what Valve's gonna do. And this should do a whole lot for not just Linux gaming, but the entire operating system ecosystem as a whole. We have Mac OS for people who want to be on Mac for productivity reasons, not really gaming. You had Windows primarily for gaming and, you know, a little bit of work and professional applications for things that have software support there. But I can see a significant portion of gamers, especially if driver support continues to develop, switch over to SteamOS, especially now that Nvidia bought the guy who was working on the Nvidia Nuvo driver for Linux and they have him on staff now where he's actually actively working to get Linux drivers for NVIDIA to work better. This whole ecosystem is just starting to flesh out in a way that's going to start opening up branching paths moving forward that we haven't had in recent history. More diversity, more options, more accessibility, better pizza, better ingredients. I was hoping Kyler was gonna join in on me with that one. No, oh, jeez. You legitimately startled me. I thought he wasn't listening. I thought he had his uh, headphones on. But I want to thank you guys for listening to all the Computex coverage that we've had here uh, while we've been in Taipei. This should be our last hot news that we're doing here. In case you've missed some of our Computex coverage, a lot of it has been taking place as uh, vertical videos that we've been releasing on YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels or uh, TikTok. You can definitely check out. We've covered things like the Doom 5080, the wood grain graphics card that is from Silverstone's FLP02 to retro case and we have a lot more content that's going to be dropping over the next few days so big thanks to everybody who's watched that additionally we've had our sponsored content which we couldn't be here in taiwan and taipei without our sponsors like the sponsor of hot news today jawa or companies like thermal take bringing us out cryo rig excited to see them back uh pro gamers group who has a ton of different companies under their umbrella like haven or apnx or aerocool or even gigabyte showing off their aero x16 We've just had a great time here being able to cover not just things that are mainstream, but we tried to find stuff that was off the beaten path as well. And uh, we always love coming to Taiwan. So big thanks to all of our sponsors and to you guys for watching the videos, because if you don't watch them, then we, uh, we can't afford to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I can go back to your comments from yesterday's episode, Hot News, so let's see what they have to say. Graham Thomas saying, Blender user here, super excited about AMD stepping up on the professional side. VRAM is so important for large scenes, and NVIDIA's VRAM price model has us budget creators in chokehold. Yeah, um, but also to some extent, so does AMD at the current point, right? They already had an affordable 16 gig graphics card last year. Uh, it was the 7900 GRE, so the like 9000 series didn't do a whole lot on the VRAM side of things. In fact, the flagship has eight fewer gigabytes of VRAM. So hopefully, uh, you know, maybe there's a professional card that they drop where it's like the 9070 XT with 32 gigs or something very similar to what uh, Intel is doing with their ARC B60 24 gig. Something like that could be pretty cool where, you know, one of the reasons it's clear AMD has the cheaper price this generation is because they chose to go with GDDR6. The memory controller, the price of the memory was probably significantly cheaper than whatever NVIDIA 
decided to do in order to support GDDR7. And so that's helped them to keep the price down. So, uh, you know, it's a little less excusable that they haven't given us more VRAM because they kept the prices down in order to do that. And uh, they they ended up giving us uh, fewer fewer amounts, like the 9070 GRE having 12 gigabytes versus the 7900 GRE having 16. And then we got Mike saying, do Gen Zers even recognize Scooby-Doo? Brother, I have some news for you. The two fellas that filmed that ad spot, who are the brainchild behind that operation in combination with Falcon Northwest, uh, they're Zoomers, they're Gen Z. They are firmly, squarely Gen Z people. Yeah, they know what Scooby-Doo is. Gen Z is way older than you think they are. They are firmly in their careers. They are adults. They are like starting families and having children. They are parents now. Gen Z is not that young, man. <laughs> Maybe the bottom range of Gen Z that's close to Gen Alpha, because that's going to be like they were born in like 2008 to 2010, like the really tail end of what Gen Z is. But even still, uh, cultural staples stay cultural staples for a while. Scooby-Doo's not one of those ones that uh, disappears quite quickly. And then I got Empalol saying, LOL, I forgot you guys are in Taiwan. I had wondered at the start of the video why Kyler is wearing his short shorts. Those aren't short shorts. Those are Kyler's regular shorts. You don't want to see Kyler in his short shorts because those are much shorter. No, please do not. Please stay back there. That, that boy is not clothed appropriately. Let me tell you, uh, yes, it is It is quite warm here and quite humid, but uh, it's always enjoyable being here in Taiwan. I, I love it. And then Z Shrink saying, the chaos at the end had me laughing at my desk. Come on, man, I'm at work. We're not responsible for where you happen to watch our content. That's that's on you. But it was, it was on me that Kyler flipped off the camera. That wasn't cool. You stay back there. You don't come out. I'm gonna flip off the camera. No, you're not. You're not gonna flip off the camera. You're gonna stay back there in your little hidey hole with your shorty shorts. Hey, hey! I don't know what got caught on camera, but geez, you're really making Rickus work for this sensor. All right, see you guys uh, hopefully on Tuesday for more hot news. That's the idea.